Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and what an incredible week it has been witnessing SpaceX's Crew Dragon complete its mission perfectly to and from the International Space Station. Today we are going to talk about why this is such a huge deal for SpaceX and why it is so important for the United States. Now some of you may be wondering what the fuss is all about here, as after all humans have been flying to the International Space Station for a long time now. It's just the low Earth orbit, right? So. You know, we've done it dozens of times, what's the big deal? Firstly, let's just look at a little history of the International Space Station itself. The space station is of course a joint project between five participating space agencies and it has been for many years. The station itself is largely divided into two main sections, the Russian orbital segment and the United States orbital segment, which is shared by many nations. Now since the year 2000 there have permanently been astronauts aboard this wonderful marvel of modern science. Now the station itself is essentially an orbiting laboratory hurtling around the earth at around 17,150 miles per hour or 7.66 kilometers per second. Now that is incredibly fast. As well as this incredible orbital velocity, the station is also orbiting well above the atmosphere at around 400 kilometers above the surface of the earth. Now as it stands today, all astronauts from the United States are actually required to fly up to the station from Russian Soyuz rockets launching from Kazakhstan. And it has been this way since 2011 when the United States retired the space shuttle. Since this time all astronauts from the US have needed to hitch a ride with the Russians. Now of course NASA never wanted this reliance on Russian vehicles to remain indefinitely and they created the commercial crew program to stimulate the development of privately operated crew vehicles to transport crew to low earth orbit with their own launch systems. In October of 2014, NASA finally selected the Dragon spacecraft as one of the candidates to fly American astronauts to the International Space Station. Now what a lot of people may not know is that the development of SpaceX's crew rated vehicle was initially named as the Dragon Rider way back in 2010. In fact, around six months before NASA's announcement, SpaceX unveiled the initial version of the vehicle which was now renamed as the Dragon V2. Now this amazing vehicle was unlike anything that anyone had ever seen and the excitement from the industry was already incredible at this point. As you can probably already see here, the overall appearance of the vehicle didn't really change all that much over the past few years. The inner workings and requirements of the vessel however continued to evolve very rapidly. In 2015 we saw the pad abort test, followed by the incredible hover test in 2016. The development over these few years was extremely fast and it seemed to take almost no time at all to see the initial Crew Dragon concept vehicle evolve. However, since then, what does seem to have taken a great deal of time is preparing the Crew Dragon vehicle with all the necessary safety systems and NASA requirements that needed to be added and re-engineered over the past few years. We have been wondering if Crew Dragon would follow the trend of the SLS and just get delayed almost indefinitely. But this has all changed over the last few months with the test schedule getting locked in, the development of the Falcon 9 being locked down and the test fire being completed. This brings us now up to last week where we finally witnessed the nerve wracking launch countdown. SpaceX's Crew Dragon here sitting on top of the incredible Falcon 9 rocket. Inside a single sensor packed dummy astronaut named Ripley, named of course after the iconic Ellen Ripley character from the movie Alien. Along with this, a super high tech zero G indicator was added just before the launch. Speaking of which, I dare say that this launch has been a pretty big deal for the makers of this planetary pal Earth plush toy from Celestial Buddies here. Being the geek I am, I've already tried unsuccessfully to order this myself and have been met with the out of stock due to high demand message. Hmm, I can't imagine why. So the stage was set, the countdown was on, holding our breath as the countdown passed the 10 second mark. No holds, no issues, this new vehicle was going to launch this very day. 
So of course, as we all now know, Crew Dragon launched on schedule at 7.49 UTC on the 2nd of March from the historic launch pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. The very same launch complex, of course, used by NASA's Saturn V moon rockets and space shuttles. The demonstration mission, of course, didn't have any human occupants on board, as the purpose for this mission was for SpaceX and NASA to test all systems and processes would work correctly before astronauts are permitted to fly. The liftoff itself followed the general Falcon 9 flight profile that we're all used to seeing. Once again, SpaceX recovered that first stage booster in spectacular fashion on the drone ship, of course I still love you. The second stage then kept pushing the rocket up into a low Earth orbit where Crew Dragon then separated away to begin a day-long chase down of the International Space Station. Once the long chase of the International Space Station was complete, it was then time for the Crew Dragon to run a number of maneuver tests prior to the very first SpaceX automated docking that was to then take place. Now, because this was the first time SpaceX and the Crew Dragon have been involved in a full automated docking sequence, mission control needed to tread very carefully. Initially, the Crew Dragon capsule was brought in slowly and at a distance of around 150 meters, it was intentionally halted for some further tests. The vehicle was ordered to back off to around 180 meters to test a few abort scenarios of the docking process and only then was the final command sent to bring the vessel back in to sit 20 meters from the station in preparation to that final docking. Now, very, very lucky for me, at this exact time, the space station, along with Crew Dragon, flew right by Tasmania, which is where I was watching the live stream. I popped my head outside and watched it literally shoot across the sky in amazement. What a world we live in to be able to see something like this. After heading back inside, the final tests and checks were just being finalized. Then we all watched in awe as the brand new high-tech Crew Dragon vehicle successfully hard docked to the station's new international docking adapter. Coincidentally, this docking adapter was actually delivered by SpaceX's cargo mission back in 2016, so it has been waiting here all this time for Crew Dragon to arrive. So after seeing these amazing shots of the Dragon vehicle, we then watched the Crew Dragon slowly close that 20 meter distance and successfully complete a hard dock, attaching itself to the Harmony module. This again was the very first autonomous docking of any commercial spacecraft. How cool is that? Now obviously SpaceX have already been using its first iteration of the Dragon cargo vessel over the past few years and it's already delivered 15 cargo missions to the International Space Station right from the CRS-1 mission through to the CRS-16 mission. Sadly, the CRS-7 mission failed to make it to orbit and that particular vehicle was lost. Now this version of the Dragon cannot dock itself like we've just witnessed here with Crew Dragon. This initial Dragon cargo vessel is captured instead by the crew using the station's robotic arm and then it's slowly pulled into place. They actually call this berthing rather than docking and this is why the Crew Dragon is such an improvement. In fact, in the future, the idea, I believe, is to reuse these new Crew Dragon vehicles for cargo missions, obviously with some modifications to the interior and that sort of thing. So after some leak and pressurization tests, the crew aboard the space station opened up the hatch and ventured inside, greeting Ripley and the zero-g indicator. Also packed inside were around 400 pounds or 180 kilograms of supplies and equipment to bring aboard. This cargo mass was likely there to simulate the mass of the real astronauts due to ride up in the upcoming manned mission. And of course, if you're going to send a demo mission, you may as well load up some necessary supplies. After spending several days and nights at the International Space Station, the Crew Dragon spacecraft cast off from the station for the return to Earth on Friday the 8th of March as it wrapped up its historic test flight. Several hours later, Crew Dragon conducted its deorbit burn and separated from the trunk segment of the vehicle. Just a little later again, Crew Dragon re-entered the atmosphere, wiping off enough velocity, the chutes deployed exactly as expected, and we had a beautiful splashdown of the vehicle in the ocean. Now, in this mission, they have tested everything, right from the launch to the beautiful 
automated docking sequences from stability at the space station right through to returning the vessel home for a perfect descent and splash down in the ocean. So what is the next milestone for the Crew Dragon story? There will be a flight abort test which is going to test the launch abort system while the Falcon 9 is in flight. If all goes well here, we may very well see the first two astronauts, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, launching inside the Crew Dragon in the middle of this year. Now with all this wonderful news, we have coming up the second ever Falcon Heavy flight which has unsurprisingly been pushed back into April. For some information on this incredible upcoming mission, please do check out my video linked here in the top right, or alternatively, you can find a link to this at the end of the video. I'm also working on some more exciting SpaceX topics like this as well, so do remember to hit that subscribe button and bell to get notified. I hope you enjoy this video. If you're interested in some simulations of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, I've made a number of those here on the channel, so take a look. Also, a massive thank you for my very dedicated quality control squad listed here. They donate their time to me simply to help research these topics and verify that I'm presenting things as well as it can be. If you would like to be involved, simply follow the link in the description of the video. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have everything you need to know about the upcoming Falcon Heavy mission. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.